is, and I really appreciate everything uh, that you've done and kind of helped me and, and vice versa. So uh, what I want to talk about today was our defensive game planning, kind of take you through a whole week of what we do at Bosco, what we're looking for, how we prepare our kids, and, and those things that we're doing there. So um, again, there's my email down there at the bottom. Let me go try to get through this. Hold on. It's kind of locked on the screen. Do you know, Jim, what's going on here? Okay, can you see that? Use the share screen button. Yeah. When, when I go share screen, I'm having a hard time uh, going through the slides. Yeah, there it goes. Okay. So can you see everything on the, on the whole screen or? Uh, no, you got to, I think, uh, try uh, try to go to slides. They, the yeah. But slide I do that, show. but I can't go from one slide to the next. Oh, here we go. Okay. Go. Got it. Got so, it. Okay. Um, so obviously St. John Bosco, we are all boys private school in Southern California. Um, this last year, we had a great season. You know, we were uh, great kids at our school. Um, so last year we actually finished the season off uh, as national champions. Uh, we have won three state championships uh, in the 10 years I've been there. Uh, we play in the training league, very competitive league. Um, it's a really great level of football and, and really happy to be there. So uh, defensively, let's talk about our motto. Uh, that kind of goes into how we game plan and what we're doing. Uh, we have two things we always teach the kids. We talk about swarm and punish and do your job. So those are things, you know, we have player of the game shirts. We have other things going on. Um, you know, those kids know that. Uh, part of our scouting report, part of how we grade, um, all those things have to do with those two things. So swarm and punish and do your job. Those, those are our mottos. Um, this quote I got, uh, been coaching for almost 30 years now. In the mid-90s, uh, the defensive coordinator at the time, Joe Silvey, uh, who I'm still good friends with now, um, kind of came up with this quote, and I actually love this. Obviously, victorious warrior wins first and then goes to battle, while a defeated warrior uh, go, uh, obviously goes to the game and tries to win there. So at that point, you know, that, that's kind of what we're thinking about every week, um, every weekend. So obviously, we want to try to win the game uh, Friday night, or fr we want to try to win the game before the game Friday night. So that goes into what we try to do on the weekends, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so on through there. Um, obviously, when we talk about our Saturday schedule, that's how we're going to start. Basically, I want to take you through a day by day of what we do, what we break down, how we break down film, what we're looking at, um, and all that good type of stuff there. Oh, hold on, this little thing popped up here. Okay, perfect. Okay, uh, so it's about us first. So when we come in Saturday morning, uh, we come in, and the first thing I care about is it's about us. It's not so much about the opponents, uh, who we're seeing, what we're doing. It starts with us. So when we watch film, and again, we're going to talk about did our players swarm and punish, and did they do their job? And then we start talking about if not, why did they not do those things? Again, I have an issue here going to the next slide. All right, it froze again on me, sorry. Are you there, Jim? Yeah, so uh, yeah, you probably have to share the screen again. I'm not sure why it's doing that. Sorry about that, yeah. Coach. Uh, it should be able to either- I mean, either... I was going through the other one, so all of a sudden, I don't know why all of a sudden. Yeah, maybe try it. Yeah, so we've got your Saturday schedule uh, slide up. Yeah. So your screen should be uh, up. Just, yeah, just it's locked on that screen. So yeah, not sure why. Let me. Okay, can you see that now? No, I can. Yeah. I can. No, I can. I can hear you, uh, but I, I don't see your screen. Okay. Uh, let me see if we lost your uh, connection as a host. You see it now? Yeah, I see it now. Okay. So for whatever reason, it keeps going back and forth. Okay. So obviously, we're talking about us on Saturday first. Uh, so here's what we break down on Saturday. So we're going to talk about um, what they did and then what we did. Okay. So obviously. Um, 
you know, after games Friday night, I can't go to bed. I'm kind of wired in the whole deal. Uh, we kind of go out as a staff afterwards um, and then uh, drive home. So I end up tagging into a lot of stuff sometimes uh, Friday night before going to bed. Uh, but basically, it's different coaches, different things to tag. And, and basically, by 9 o'clock in the morning, Saturday morning, we want these columns done. Uh, you know, so some guys do it Friday night. Some guys will come in early a little bit on Saturday morning and do these things. So what they did, we're going to break down, obviously, down in distance. We give that a down and distance number. And this is basically helps us sort later on um, how to do different things. You know, first in possession, first and 10. Uh, we go second and eight after a run, second and eight after a pass. So basically, they got stuffed on first down. What do they want to do with the next down? Uh, yard line, and then we tag the field zone in there. Um, red zone, goal line, ours, theirs, backed up. Uh, personnel, you know, that standard 10 personnel would mean one, one back, no tight ends. Uh, 11, one back, one tight end. Offensive structure, in case we want to just sort all three by ones. Uh, any FIBs, those type of things. Motions, uh, backfield, offensive formation, offensive play. Uh, the play type, gain, result, and route thrown. Um, so those are all things we're, we're tagging. Uh, what the opponent did to us in the game. You know, offensive play, obviously, I just cut up some plays here. These were all drop back passes. Uh, one of the big ones we do for, for self-scout uh, and for opponent scout is route thrown. I think it's a big one. Um, you know, so if it's trips, the number one guy to the field is one, you know, 10 yard out. The second guy would be five yard out. Um, but it's actually the, the route they've thrown. The backside, obviously, you can see here, it says uh, backside deep hitch. Uh, that was a single man side. Uh, if they throw the running back, we'll tag that. If they throw the tight end, we'll tag that. Uh, and then we tag what we did, what package we were in. We run multiple packages. Uh, you know, we have the ability, obviously, to have more than just 11 guys. Uh, you know, we have a penny package, a nickel, base, mint, dime. We have those different things. So we tag that, uh, what our actual huddle call was. Uh, and then we'll extrapolate that into defensive front, uh, defensive stunt, blitz, coverage. Okay, so we'll actually take that call and what did we actually run. Uh, coverage calls, you know, we're, we're a big quarters team. The field split in half, it's divorced, so one side is run a bracket. The other side's running mod. Uh, so if I want to go back and look at any time we ran all brackets or all mod cut, all the different calls we have, I can sort that. Uh, what concept? Obviously, what are we giving them? You know, the the why uh, the maca is obviously a, a cover a six man pressure cover zero. We have one high man. Uh, sim pressures cover sevens. Uh, five man pressure cover seven fire zones. So different things there. Um, we tag what situation. Obviously, we'll talk about here in a minute. We do third downs. We spend a lot of time on that. So. I will tag situation, third down, fourth down, uh, red area. Uh, obviously, third down, did we win or lose it? Again, we'll talk about that here coming up. Uh, any kind of defensive comment, you know, I'll make something there for future use. Uh, you know, great wrong arm or, you know, whatever, whatever we want to tag there. And then, obviously, the opponent team uh, we have next to that. Uh, so, basically, that was all tagged. Uh, so, we're going to come in. We're going to watch the game roughly about 9, 9.30 Saturday morning. Okay. Again, we want to start with ourselves on Saturdays. I'm not, you know, if we can't be right ourselves, it doesn't matter what our opponent's doing. Um, so as we watch the game, we're going to confirm the game tags. You know, everybody has different columns. Hey, was that really uh, trio gun week, drop back pass? Uh, and then we also, we're obviously taking notes at this point. Uh, we do a production chart. So right below that's kind of an idea of what we do. Um, I've seen it done different ways. This is something I've had for, you know, 20 years of doing this or so. Uh, you can kind of see that real quick there. Lead tackle, uh, two points, assist, tackle for losses, three, sack, hatchet. Uh, always not politically correct anymore, but that's a violent but legal hit on the quarterback. Uh, it's got to be legal, obviously. A polish is one. Basically, that's an assisted tackle. Um, we talk about swarm punish. Um, you're basically the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh guy getting into the pile. Uh, we're not going to give you an assisted tackle for that, but it is worth the same amount of points. Um, you know, you pull up max preps and you have eight guys on the team with over 150 tackles. It's kind of uh, suspicious sometimes. So you want to try to keep that real. So we give them a polish. Uh, big hit, fumble cause, fumble recovered. Uh, deflection or pass breakup, interception, and then if you score on defense, you get 10 points. And I'll show you kind of an example of that. But we, we do this. Uh, we definitely talk about what we call the uglies. That's missed tackles, uh, missed assignments, and lopes. So as we're watching the film, uh, like I said, we've, we've tagged it now, either Friday night or Saturday morning. 9.30 is 10 o'clock or so. We're watching this as a staff. Um, you know, we have a big defensive staff, but honestly, on Saturday, we basically have myself and three other guys come in. And we're the ones kind of doing the lion's share of the work. Um, you know, the other guys that are parents, they coach Pop Warner, uh, they have a, another job. Obviously, we're, we're similar to Savora, where we only have a few guys on campus. Myself, uh, I'm off campus. Um, so there's about four of us there in the morning defensively. Uh, we only coach one way. 
Um, and then we basically uh, talk as a staff, or defensive staff, about after the game, uh, what we learned. We talk about lessons learned. And here's what we're actually going to talk about. Things we did well. Okay, guys, what did we do well? Hey, you know what? We came up with that FIB check, and that was really good. Things we did poorly. Okay, we, again, we write this down on a form and document this. We make it, actually make a copy of that form. The one, the master goes obviously in our main file. Another one goes on my desk, then basically in another file folder so we can go back and look at it any time. Um, so what did we do well? What did we do poorly? Uh, critical mistakes in the game. You know, hey, guys, we, we went into this empty check, and, and that was really bad. You know, we got to talk about next time we get into an all-out six-man pressure on empty. And um, so we got six-man pressure on empty, and they're, they're throwing the ball on screens. We know we got to get out of, from doing that. So uh, preparation errors. Hey, you know what? We spent way too much time on the option game. They didn't come to that. Uh, we got to find out a way next week uh, to do a little bit more the next time we would play them. I do a little more red zone or goal line or spend a little more time on their bastard formations. Uh, personnel errors, you know, hey, you know, that's usually in the coverage in the back end. Hey, we cannot put this corner on that receiver, you know, if you face these guys again, or, you know, hey, that's a, it's a, it's a short corner. And these other weeks when we get tall receivers, you know, these people are going to watch this film and see that. Uh, personal errors. And then obviously comments uh, regarding the game. So those are kind of the six things that we fill out. And again, we make a copy of that. Uh, and stick it into the season folder so we can go back and, and look at that. And then for the folder for the season um, or for that for that week, so if we have to play them again or the next year, we can go back and talk about, hey, guys, what did we do well? What did we do poorly? Some mistakes we made and so on. So that's what we're doing there after our game. Um, so then we're going to work on uh, what we call our post-game handout. Uh, this is uploaded to Huddle. Um, it's usually uploaded to Huddle on Saturday night. And this is basically uh, we share with the kids uh, basically the stats, the, the, all those things from the game. Uh, so, and again, every, everybody on the staff, the four guys working kind of have a little, uh, little role in this. Uh, and then we basically share this to huddle. In the picture there on the right is a picture. We have a turnover chain on the back of the chain. Actually, after turnover, they got to sign it. Pretty cool idea we had. Uh, that was two years ago. Um, so the, what we do, the postgame handout, again, I'm going to show you an example of what this is. There's a title page with a picture, uh, our goals, our stats, our third down report, uh, the ugliest, which is missed tackles, loves to miss assignments, uh, turnovers and special plays. Um, like I said, we put this in huddle, so we will send them actually a video, or a, we'll put the video clips of those plays in there, a production chart by the game, and then the season one. And again, we'll upload this. So here's basically what they would get into huddle. So they're going to open up their huddle. Saturday night, they'll get this. Uh, this was one. Um, so my, my school computer is still back at Bosco with all my files on it. So I'm working off of some stuff I had on a hard drive, some stuff I might have emailed to people. So um, some of these pictures are from two years ago. The stats are from last year, so I'm trying to try to piece some things together here. Um, but because so a picture from the game, usually I like to use a scoreboard or some kind of a cool photo. Um, this is obviously from the night before. Uh, we got some people that take photos of the games and do all type of stuff. Um, so it's pretty cool the kids really get into that. So we're going to go up our goals. Okay, so these are the things that we think are important for our defense. And I've had some different ones here. Um, obviously, blue means we got it. Red means we did not. So when, obviously, that's the most important one. Again, this was after the Jay Sarah game last year. Uh, at that point, we were 7-0. Uh, 14 points or less. Obviously, there's one game we didn't get it. Um, again, we were only counting defensive, defensive points. So here against Don Bosco, we gave up 21, but it says 14. That was because we gave up a, a pick six. Uh, same thing here in the Servat game. The, the difference here is uh, we gave up six points uh, on a blocked punt. But we obviously will include the uh, PAT uh, or PAT blocks near there. Uh, hold opponent down to 250 yards. You know, we used to separate that into run, run, pass. Uh, right now, we kind of feel like 250 yards is the marker. Again, we confirmed that here last year where you look at the one game we gave up more than 20 or more than 14 points uh, was the game, obviously, we gave up more than, more than 250 yards. Uh, create three turnovers. We think that's a big thing in winning football games. And obviously, at this point, we had not done that yet. A couple of games, we had two, uh, two, four, five. So we had seven turnovers in basically seven games. But we try to get three a game. Uh, th third down stops 70 percent uh, and actually in 2018 we had 14 games all 14 games were blue it was really cool we were high high to mid 80s um, so we say that yes and what the percentage was so obviously a good council game we were short 67 percent third down stops and this is regardless of down and distance this is first and, or third and one third and five third and 20 whatever it is uh, the survey game always we did a very poor job in getting off the field on third downs score on defense we think that's a big key in winning football games uh, at this point, we'd only scored on defense one time uh, against Miliani. Uh, we ran a – was saving the world, uh, shake two roll, and had a pick six there against Miliani. 
Uh, wind sudden change, um, that's blue. And a lot, a lot of times that's blue because our offense does a great job protecting the ball. So obviously if we have no turnovers offensively, that's automatically blue. Um, we talk about sudden change, force and kicks. Uh, you know, so obviously there's a turnover. Uh, we huddle up real quick before we go on the field. We talk to them about sudden change and send them out there and obviously say, no matter where this ball is and field position wise, we got to force a kick. Obviously we prefer a punt. Uh, field goal obviously would be the next one. And then no big plays. What we consider a big play in a run game is more than 15 yards. Uh, pass is over 20 yards. So you can see there the DeMatha game. Uh, no, we gave, we gave up three big plays, two passes, one run. Uh, and then obviously the good council game, we did not give up any big plays. Again, that's 15 on the run, 20 on the pass. Um, we've had some different things here. Create a sack, one in seven attempts. Um, less than a certain amount of yards rushing. You know, I know Alabama's big on that. Um, but this has kind of been good for us. This, this is what we feel is the difference between winning, winning and losing games. 14 points or less, 250 yards. You want to create three turnovers, 70% stops on third downs, score on defense, win sudden change, no big plays. Uh, you're obviously going to win a, a majority of your games if you're going to get uh, blue in all those. On the bottom there is basically just kind of a tally of run yardage, pass yardage uh, on the season up to that date and what we're going through at that point. Uh, the next one is defensive stats. Uh, obviously, how many plays we have in the game, rushing attempts, uh, we got rushing yards, average per carry, completion attempts, passing yards, total yards, turnovers, sacks, points allowed. Uh, so again, it, each game is kind of done into there. And the far right, we kind of have the averages. So at this point, we gave up 89 yards to run, or 89 yards a game rushing, uh, 2.7 yards basically carry. Uh, the offense was 43% against us, 111 yards, 200 yards basic total, and seven turnovers, 18 sacks. And at that point, we're getting up 10.8 points a game. Uh, this is a third down report. This is big. Uh, we spend a lot of time on this. Again, this is what we tag when we tag our huddle plays, right? We've tagged third down, win or loss. So we're going to go through, just kind of go through the left, down and distance. So it's third and five. Um, this goes in the order of the game. So the first time we were actually playing skinny, not a great third and five call, but we're kind of trying to get our, get our feet set in the game. That uh, was a complete nine yard gain. So we obviously lost that one. Why did we lose that, right? So we're always going to list that down there. Obviously, number 22. Uh, our, our Will Backer did not do a good job on taking three through, and we missed a tackle. Uh, a few plays down there, it was third and nine. We were running games, 57 Seahawk. Uh, we lost. We had decent coverage, but good offense. You know, you know, we do that when we watch film. We talk to the kids, hey, is that bad defense or is that good offense? And obviously, you know, they're over there practicing. We obviously play some really good teams. Um, and good offense, you know, if they throw a back shoulder and you're in good position, that, that's just good offense. You know, you had good coverage, number one. Um, they just threw they threw a great ball and they had a nice catch. So it's not always on us. You know, we will definitely let, let them know that, hey, that's good offense. Uh, a few plays later, obviously, we lost again. Um, third and 14, and obviously, they got 14-yard gain there. It was a quarterback draw. Again, we were in game 57 Seahawk. And 27-34, we did a poor job in the quarterback draw. We'll also tell them, hey, why we did a good job. You know, there's good pursuit, good clear and cloudy. Uh, that was a three, three, uh, third and two. We ran a sting check for zero-yard gain. Hey, 55, that's a great job. I'm seeing Claren Cloudy going and tackle that thing uh, for a negative or for a zero yard gain. Uh, but now towards the bottom, uh, that week we we're 77%. Uh, our goal was 70. At that point that year, we were 75.8. Again, that Jay Sarah game, we were 10 for three wins and losses. So if you had those columns up there, that's 10 3. And then that's for the season. So again, third down, I mean, we don't run a whole new defense on third down, but we have different separate calls on third down. So we're, we're dictating this. You know, there's a few years back, we were, we were really bad on third down. And it was almost kind of a running joke how bad we were. Um, so this is something we've kind of really gone to, and this is help keeps our kids accountable and lets us know um, kind of where we're at third down wise. Uh, let me go through this a little bit quicker here now. So turnovers. Uh, so we'll put a little picture again. These are pictures from the game. Um, again, these are pictures actually. This is this one's from slides from two years ago. So if you guys know us, um, again, my master files are all back at school, my school computer. So I threw some pictures on here. Uh, and then we will show the play. Again, this is uploaded to Huddle. So we'll show the play, that turnover. We celebrate those, uh, make, a, make a good time of that. Obviously, they score on defense. Uh, we definitely celebrate that. You know, cheer the guy, clap for the guy. Um, I've had a longstanding thing where the guy scores on defense. I actually buy him lunch the next week. And I bring it to school. You know, they get canes, they get pizza, they get whatever they get to eat. You know, they're brought in lunch from a nice place, you know, nice to them. You know, ham bones, little chicken bowl or whatever. Um, so they get to eat that kind of in front, front of their friends. Like, hey, everyone knows, like, hey, we scored on defense. And I'm the one that scored. Uh, special play, this game, we had a big fourth down stop. So, again, we'll, we'll play that play on the huddle. Uh, not, to, not so much critique it, but more celebrate these big plays. We'll celebrate turnovers, and we'll celebrate any kind of big-time plays. Uh, the ugly. I think this is one of the most important things that we do, honestly. 
we're not trying to, to belittle kids or be mean to kids. But to me, you know, you can go out and see the, the you know, the, this great sim pressure, this or that. Uh, you know, if, if we're not great in these three areas, it doesn't matter. You know, and honestly, we have great players, but I think we win a lot of games because we make a big deal about these. Missed tackles, loafs, missed assignments. So here, again, this is just made up. So you don't want to go look at these kids on the roster. It's just made up numbers trying to show you ideas that we would do. Uh, number three is a player, and he had a missed tackle on play eight and 15. You know, we just don't want to list missed tackles. Hey, you had two, you had three. We're going to show them what plays they had a missed tackle on. As well, you know, if this kid starting, you know, 42 there had three, you know, his position coach might bring him in and say, hey, let's, let's talk about this. Why are we missing the tackles? Uh, to me, missed tackles are for two reasons. One is technique, and the technique is broken down into three things. Obviously, the approach, the contact, and the finish. So we're going to talk to them about that. Hey, your approach was poor. Your contact, your eyes were down, your head was down. Uh, we didn't finish the tackle. Uh, and the second area there are missed tackles is the weight room. You know, uh, we lift four days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We play Friday night. Um, you know, these numbers start getting bigger. I, I'd say, hey, man, I guarantee you, you are not lifting properly. So uh, we've done some things there where, you know, a certain amount of missed tackles. Uh, you have to lift in front of me or our strength coach uh, that whole week to make sure you're doing all your sets of what you're doing. Um, we've had, we have that big kind of tackle sled thing. They've had to, you know, for every missed tackle, they have to go and take that thing down five times. Um, during either a special team period or after practice. Um, so missed tackle is something we definitely talk about. Again, the two areas there, why is technique and weight room, in my opinion. Loafs, that, that's just buy-in. You know, if you're on this thing, you know, we have some great kids, and they, they take a lot of pride in what we do. You know, you know, again, there's no doubt we have great players, but we have players that really care. So in this purple ca category here, Loafs, if you're on there, we have kids on the team, Kobe Pepe last year, Court Williams, they'll come to you and be like, hey, man, what – What's going on here? Why, why do you have three loves? Like, to, to me, this is, is, has to do with just caring. You know, the missed tackles is a certain thing. This is a, something else. And then missed assignments. To me, missed assignments is on coaching. Okay? If these numbers are too high, we're doing too much. Uh, if there's four defensive linemen on here, uh, he's, not, he's not conveying what we need to convey to our kids. Um, so, again, this, this to me wins more games, these three categories. And, and I don't try to be negative with the kids, but we're definitely going to share this with everybody. Um, if that's not your style and you want to kind of do this on your own and talk to the kids, that's great. But, you know, our kids want to be accountable. That's why they go to Bosco. They want to be great football players. They want to go to the next level. Um, so th this, this form right here wins us more games than any sim pressure uh, that you can draw. Why are we missing tackles? Why are we loafing? Uh, why do we have missed assignments? Okay, so that's part of the report. Again, they will get this. Uh, the projection chart. Obviously, that's going to be for the game. Uh, we have somebody kind of fill that out for us. And then, again, the next slide, I don't have one with me, but this is based on the season one. Um, and this is obviously one of the things they always look for. I think there's a great motivation for the kids. Um, you know, I've had the ability to go back to Alabama, uh, Georgia, Tennessee a few times. Uh, they do this after every practice in spring and fall camp. Um, obviously, they do it after games. We only do it after games, obviously. We don't have the, the time or the ability to do it after every practice. Um, but I, I was in a meeting last year with Coach Pruitt, and he's talking with his DBs. Actually, it was two years ago. He said, guys, again, let's talk about the production chart. Uh, he used a term I, I thought was funny. Obviously, it was a big term a couple years ago, fake news. So this is not fake news. He said, I don't care if you're a walk-on, and he pointed to one of the top columns. And it was a walk-on guy. He said, I don't care if you're a four-star, and I pointed to the bottom. He said, this, this doesn't lie, right? This does not lie. This, I don't care if you're a walk-on, you're a four-star. Who says you're all conference? Who says you're all wet? And, and we kind of take that mentality with the kids. As we have some guys, obviously, they're, they're highly recruitable guys. Um, where are you in the production chart? Are you making plays? Are you being productive? Um, and the kids really kind of get in that. Uh, again, this is on huddle. This is probably, probably one of the first slides they go to, and then they go back to the other ones. Um, so, again, so again, the, the point there is I want to make sure we spend plenty of time on Saturday. It does not matter what our opponent's doing. Uh, if we cannot be great, and those are things we, we want to be great about. Um, so then at that point, it's now about 12 o'clock or so. We're going to typically break down three or four games. Um, obviously, the most previous game and the most similar defensive style to us, what we run. Uh, we do have huddle assist that we use that. Um, usually, at, uh, basically by 12 noon the next day, hopefully, uh, we have those back. And then coach is going to take columns that affect them. Um, so here's the columns we break down when we're breaking down our opponent. Again, this is a completely different data set that we talked about earlier. The data set we talked about earlier was what we break down for ourselves. Okay, so there's different columns in here. You go into huddle, it says defense slash self scout that was the first ones this will say defense slash opponent scouts okay so these are the things that we're later going to break down obviously hash yard line 
uh, field zone, obviously the gold line, red area, ours there is backed up. Uh, down distance, again, down and distance number. Again, we'll go over why that's important. Uh, personnel, motion. So, so some of those first ones were done by huddle assist. I do the down distance number. That's real simple. I just categorize all the second one to threes and I just tag them with threes. Uh, so the motion, that's done by one coach. And we'll talk about what we do here in a little bit of how he talks about just that one thing. Uh, backfield offense formation, offensive play, play type, protection. Our defensive line coach does that. Any run play, he's going to put run play. Uh, if it's a path, it's month protection, which to us is half, uh, half man, half slide. Run plays, uh, you got five year, uh, five man pass protection, uh, running back out, uh, gain results. Uh, then below that, obviously the routes. Um, I'm not smart if they're to name every route combination. You know, Hoswai Juke, uh, Dagger, Lexus, Honda. So we use using the numbers. So 0789 would obviously, we're, we're going off the passing tree as much as possible. Uh, hitch corner, uh, post fade. And then down below there, it says running back out. That's obviously going to be released. Uh, route thrown. That's a big one. Again, when we tag the formation of what they're doing, uh, that's the route thrown. We do it on our own scout film and we do it for the opponent film. Uh, any kind of comments, my column, anytime we want to make anything there. Obviously, this is who they were playing. This was Oaks Christian two years ago. Uh, and then these four next four columns are done by the coach uh, when he wants to start making some of his own little cut-ups. So their uh, goal line pad level, obviously, that was a third and two down by the goal line. A uh, hi-hat. So he's going he's to be in charge of talking to us about their protections. Uh, so he's making his own little notes. I usually do the linebacker ones. Uh, the first one, you know, endo set, guard pull, running back releases. Uh, safety coach and split key, obviously, based off their alignment, uh, he was getting a key there. And then the next one was a uh, corner coach would put on press release. Hey, so he can show his guys, hey, here's how they're going to get off the press release. Uh, so basically, uh, review of Saturday. Um, obviously, our players do not come in. In California, we have an 18-hour rule. So we just not bring our kids in. Um, four defensive coaches are working. I have that fifth guy. He kind of does the stats. Uh, nine to one, it's all about us. It's about us. And then one to three, we're working on those kind of columns that we just said. Uh, we can basically finish that at home. You know, I got coaches at 2 o'clock. Hey, I, you know, I got a daughter's barbecue or daughter's birthday party. I got a family reunion, this and that stuff. So um, as long as the stuff is done the next morning by 10 o'clock, we'll be good there. Um, we watch, you know, we, we have the ability to watch our, our kids play college football. We got a bunch of kids at some at our different levels. Uh, you know, we, we got kid, you know, the coaches that are Notre Dame fans, USC fans, uh, they usually at least flip on and let me watch a little bit of Georgia or Alabama football. Um, you know, some coaches, you know, we got a Michigan fan there in the office. He watches it on his own little laptop at his desk. So, um, you know, that one to three, you know, we're working, but it, it's not, you know, we're working separate, but it's not uh, IBM. You know, we're kind of having fun and doing our own thing in there. So Sunday, this is when we're talking about our opponent. Uh, so basically, we come in about 10 o'clock. You know, some guys that want to do church, those type of things. So we'll let them go and do that. Uh, for about two hours, we're talking about our opponent and watch cut-ups. Uh, then we just spend about three hours on a scouting report. And then our game plan or weekly install, our weekly meetings, basically for an hour. <clears throat> so we're going to talk about our opponent and watch cut-ups. This is usually about two hours or so. Um, we do not sp make specific cut-ups. It's kind of very uh, fluid as the day goes on. So here's what we're talking about. So I'm in charge of personnel. So we're going to talk about what personnel groupings are being used and what they're trying to accomplish in each grouping. So uh, I'm the one that breaks down personnel groupings. So we're gonna pull up all the 10 personnel and say, okay, in 10 personnel, they are 80% pass, 20% run. And then we'll go to the next personnel grouping, 20, 20 personnel. You know, they got two backs, maybe probably a sniffer, why off. Uh, and then this is what they're true, what they've lined up in. We're not really talking so much about um, a tight end that can play multiple positions. Okay, it's what they ended up in. And what are they trying to do? If they're in four, four open, what are they trying to do? They bring that guy in a hip alignment, what are they trying to do? If he's in the backfield, sniffer alignment, what are they trying to do? Um, so obviously, are they trying to disguise those personnel groupings? So again, this kind of goes uh, organically through the day of making different cutups that apply to these things that we're seeing. Uh, do shifts or motions tipped off certain plays? So our safety coach, John Hall, does all the motions. So at this point, I basically turn the meeting over to John. I said, okay, John, talk to me about their motions. You know, and in Southern California, we don't see a whole lot of motions. So there's some weeks, coach, we got none. Great, we're moving on. Or he'll say, coach, I made this cut up. Uh, let's talk about this. When they motion from two by two to three by one, it's all past. They're running flood concepts. Uh, when it's going uh, three by one to two by two, you know, they're running the ball. Um, so again, some weeks that's something we talk about. Some weeks it's not. Uh, does the motion by specific players topic tip anything off? So again, the coach that tags this into huddle, he's responsible for this part of the meeting. So again, I can't know everything. I'm not about to know everything. So um, 
you know, he's the one kind of runs that meeting and lets everybody know in the room, hey, here's what we get when we get motion. Uh, how good is our tight end? Is he solely a run blocker or is it a legitimate pass threat? Again, we tag who's catching the ball, you know, so we'll sit there and real quickly on a huddle and tag all the tight end routes and say, okay, hey, he's, he's got four balls the whole year. We're not very worried about him catching the ball. Okay. Um, does he flex out uh, different formations? Is he a little bit vertical threat? So, again, we'll tag on their tight end, five yard out, tight end, uh, swing, you know, whatever the route combination or whatever the route is. So, again, is he a vertical threat? Is it all short stuff? Uh, do we need to cap him? Are we wasting our time uh, playing mod into the boundary and capping him when he's not going vertical at all? Would we be better off playing him Meg and then doubling the outside guy in a cone type of deal? So these are all the type of things that we talk about. Um, you know, they don't run tight end, and then it's not a talk that week. Um, you know, there's, there's not one size fits all when you talk about game planning, talking about your opponents. Uh, two tight ends are used. Very seldom we see that. Last year we did see a split back beer team. Uh, we clipped all the two tight end formations and we said, okay, are they running to the right or the left? Or are they running to 82 or are they running to 10? And that was a you know, little seven, eight minute deal that we watched and we figured out, hey, they're going to run. They're not running right or left. They're running behind 82. Um, so again, some weeks we do that. Some weeks we don't. Depends on what they're doing. Uh, is there a running back rotation? Um, again, that's John Hall. Again, our safety coach, he's doing that. He's in charge of the running backs on the scouting report. And knowing, hey, they got one back, it's, it's that, that's their guy. Hey, they got three backs. They got the one back that does everything. They got a downhill back, and they got an outside back. Um, is he a legitimate threat? Again, we tag on there. Instead of saying tight end out or, or five yard out or whatever, we'll see the same running back. You know, is he, are we running wheels? Are they, are they not throwing the back at all? Okay, so again, these are all things we're going to talk about. Uh, what's the quarterback's mobility and durability? How good is he with check, checks? How well does he handle heat in his face? Uh, what throws is he con consistently making? You know, so we'll go in there and make a cut up and say, okay, what is his top five things that he's throwing? Hey, the number one thing he throws is backside post. We've, we've tagged that. We don't have to figure out what that is. So by tagging a route thrown, to me, that's way more important than putting in there, hey, this is a dagger concept or this is a uh, Lexus concept. It's, it's where is he actually throwing the ball? So what, what throws is he consistently making? Uh, we can also do a percentage of complete and incomplete. Hey, yeah, he threw 12 post routes on the backside, but he's only completing 33% of those. You know, um, we talk about field zone. Uh, we definitely make a cut up of interceptions. Why are these interceptions happening? Is it heat in his face? Uh, is it, you know, does the receiver drop the ball? Why are those interceptions happening? We do the same thing for negative plays. Why are they getting tackles for losses? Again, is it, is it bad offense? Is it good defense? What, what are we seeing here? Uh, and then we'll do, obviously talk about the run game. Is it different from one back to two back? Um, you know, and obviously the things that are important to us, obviously draws, uh, traps, counters, you know, those obviously misdirection type little bit of things. And what kind of options? Always want to make sure we have good responsibilities for those. Uh, if they don't run any kind of option, we don't really have to worry about that. Um, so again, that'll change by week. And then obviously, obviously we almost all see shotgun. You know, I've used this, this, this kind of template for quite a while. Uh, we almost see all shotgun now, but again, who do we want to have the ball? There's some weeks, hey, we want that quarterback to have the ball. Uh, there's some weeks we want to have that running back have the ball. Uh, sprints naked, are those utilized at what part of the field? Again, those are things that stress the defense. Uh, then we talk about their base protection scheme. Again, I, at this point on Saturday morning, I do not know what their – or Sunday morning, I do not know their base protection schemes. The defensive line coach does. Okay, so he tags how many protections in a month, five-man protection, uh, full protection, um, how many players are committing. And the big one to me in high school is who or what is their weak link in their protection schemes, right? You know, it's high school football. You know, even when we're playing, you know, maybe not modern day, but some other teams, they're always going to have that weak link. So we got to go find that guy and where he's at. Uh, what has hurt or been effect, ineffective versus their protections? I mean, obviously, we're going to watch all the sacks. You know, is there something that we do? Um, you know, hey, and, and I, I don't know these things. Our D-line coach, Paul Diaz, he's in charge of this. So maybe, you know, they can't handle double F off the pressure or off the uh, double edge off the, uh, both sides. And that was something that hit on week four and week five. So the teams we played week six and week seven uh, were doing the same thing, but now they've been able to pick it up. You know, I'm not going to be able to know that. It's his job to basically tell us, uh, what are we doing in the – what, what are they doing in the protections? You know, um, how extensive is their screen game? Is there regular calls against pressures? Uh, so we tag that. Uh, who is our go-to receiver in critical situations? Where is he at by alignment, formation, down distance? Um, you know, again, modern day has four go-to guys, uh, even though they kind of had one more last year that was more uh, – a little bit better than their other ones. Um, red zone or goal line mentality, does it change from their open field attack? Uh, what yard line is that? Usually we talk about red area, red zone. Uh, from, the, from the 20 to the 8, goal line mentality is from the 7 in. Again, that can change by weeks. 
um, what is the extent of their empty package, what route concepts they work in, and then how, why are they getting explosive play? So we will do an explosive play cut up. Again, it's the same thing we, we do for ourselves. That means a run more than 15 or a pass more than 20. And again, we play or we talk about in their meetings, is this good offense or is this bad defense? And we actually watch that cut up during the week with the kids, usually on Thursday. Uh, I'm in there with the kids. Uh, we have a JV game Thursday. I stay back with the kids. And we basically call it a game. And, and they yell out loud, like, hey, let's watch these plays. Is that good offense or bad defense? Go, that's bad defense. That, those guys are just, those guys are terrible. Or, hey, that's good offense. You know, back, back shoulder is going to be pretty much good offense every time. So that's one of the things we always talk about with our kids. Um, so why are they getting explosive plays? Is it something they're doing that's really well? Or is it just, hey, man, they're, they're just not, you know, this team that they're playing has no idea how to defend FIBs or, or so on. Uh, you know, we do this little board. A lot of stuff is done digitally now, so we don't do this uh, all the time. Um, again, it's kind of a different format that we do it now. They're, they're smaller. Um, but this is something we've done in the past. Uh, at this point now, we're going to work on our scouting report, the opponent offense. And this is basically for three hours. Uh, this is quiet time. We basically work. We've now talked about what they do, and we put together reports and all that stuff. And then the last, I'll show you those in here in a second. And then for the last hour, we're basically going to talk about the weekly game plan. How, what do we need to do to defeat these guys? Um, so we start with position maintenance. Again, if you're a save and disciple, position maintenance means something different for you, but I've used this term forever. Uh, we're going to talk about four or five things. You know, start with Coach Diaz, the defense line. Hey, what do you have to do this week? What do we have to do to be great? What do we have to do to win the game? Um, and down at the bottom, I don't want to see the basics. Every week we're going to work pursuit. Uh, you know, we're going to talk about that. We don't really work a pursuit drill per, per se, but we're going to talk about that. Every week we're going to work tackling, every week we're going to work turnovers. What is different for this week for your position that we need to do that we have to win? And obviously, here's just some of that. Hey, we got to get great get offs, man. These guys fire off the ball. We've got to beat them out of their stance. Uh, you know, they're, they're great on double teams. We've got to make sure we work double teams. Uh, they're a counter gap team type stuff. We've got to work sure we work wrong arms. And then, hey, their, their screens are really deadly. We need to make sure we work screen, uh, screen recognition. So each coach, uh, the four guys obviously that work on Saturdays and Sundays are responsible for each one of these things. And what do we need to do, obviously, to win this game? And these should be something different. Obviously, linebackers are, hey, see crossers, you know, counter boot, we got to go play that. Um, you know, save these crackle plays, um, stacks, you know, hey, how are we going to play, you know, the big stack team, how are we going to play that? So when we put this up on our board and, and guys are accountable to this, like it, well, the worst thing to do is put this up there and uh, defense line puts, hey, man, we're going to work double teams. We're going to be great at that this week. Uh, we're going to make sure they can't run these plays. And then we'll come in on Saturday mornings and be like, hey, man, how do we, why, do we not get, why do we not get this done? You know, that we, we identify this is one of the things we got to make sure we work this week. Um, so we work, work through that. Uh, here's a practice example of a Monday deal here. Um, so again, much, so this is based on Orange Lutheran week. Um, we do our pre-practice, we do dailies. I am the most anti-walkthrough coach you'll ever meet. Um, you know, I just think for nowadays kids, I mean, even though our kids are engaged, you know, I, I just feel like we got butterfly watchers. I better sit in a meeting and show them uh, visually uh, on a screen some different formations and line up to those things. And, you know, hey, this is, you know, star call, hey, star right. They'll call it the formation, hey, trio, trio left, gun weak. You know, I just think, and that said, it's, it's much better than the walkthrough stuff. So you'll see us do very, very little walkthrough stuff. So uh, the pre-practice, we usually do dailies, uh, you know, depending on where our meeting is and how quickly we end our meeting, we we can go from straight from meetings to the field. Um, then uh, dynamic warm up, attendance, kickoff. Uh, then we, we actually have four endos, okay? And we actually have 25 minutes endos. The first five minutes, it's gonna be real quick. We're talking about run. What do we need to do that we can run? Is that crack replace? Uh, is that block protection? What do we need to do there? And then we're gonna go into half line inside run. Uh, and then that's for 15 minutes. Some days, that is the first five minutes is best on best. Then we go five minutes of defensive emphasis and we go five minutes of offensive emphasis. Uh, for the half line inside side, um, we'll do something there. Uh, it's kind of hard to go emphasis. Well, we don't really emphasize that. Uh, it's the other periods we do that. Um, then we now have a 10 minute of a pass endo. Okay, so we're going to work pass endos. Uh, again, we've already done our daily, so we're going to work something specifically for that. And uh, that point on Mondays, we go into seven on seven. I am, again, I, I'm probably more anti seven on seven coach than I am walkthrough coach. Uh, we only do seven ons usually on Monday. Um, if the offense needs another day, we will do it something different. Uh, that first yellow highlighted thing there, um, this is turnovers. So this is a 15 minute period. The entire program is doing seven on seven. So it's gonna be offensive emphasis, okay? And then our scout defense is gonna work the seven on the scout team. Uh, for the bar varsity only guys, the defensive guys, we're gonna go over our own little corner and work turnovers. We're not just gonna stand there and watch our scout team uh, work against the starting offense. So we're gonna go work turnovers. 
Uh, and then for the last seven minutes, it's basically us going seven on. Uh, then we go back into endo. This is a, a five minute tackling period. We tackle every day. Does that mean we hit bodies? No, absolutely not. Uh, on Monday, we'll be tackle rings. Uh, we'll do fit tackles on bags. Uh, there's no contact on Monday. We're actually not in full gear on Monday either. Uh, we're usually just in shells. Uh, then we'll go into team one, uh, which is 15 minutes. Again, sometimes that's five minutes best on best. Then it's five minutes offensive emphasis, five minutes defensive emphasis. We now have our fourth endo. That's really to kind of clean up some things. Uh, then it says blitz on the can. So what they're going to do there is that special team number three, if you look on the left, uh, we're usually do PAT, field goal, uh, fire calls, that type of stuff. So we're, again, we're instead of standing around watching our kickers kick uh, and hit the goalpost half the time, uh, we're, we're going to go over and work some blitz on the cans. Uh, this would be the, the one time we kind of do walk and talk. But when I talk about walk and talk, it's just, it's just standing there, one guy coaching, and everyone's just kind of standing there looking around. So we're actually working here, you know, we'll blitz on the trash cans. And then team two. So Monday, uh, team one is usually first downs, um, and team two is usually kind of second downs. What we call base downs, first and 10, uh, second and one to seven. Okay, a uh, little picture here. So here's a picture of half line. Uh, so you can kind of see on the left here, we're already running a deal. Uh, we do half line Monday and Wednesday. Uh, Monday, again, so it's a 15 minute period that's kind of split between inside run and half line. Uh, our offense takes more time on, on inside run, which I love. Again, we're not full gear. Um, you know, typically against our scout offensive line, which is the JV line, everything's a tackle for a loss. You know, we try to turn it into more of a kind of fit drill. So we actually kind of get eight, nine minutes of this. Um, so the, we're working independently from each other. There's a side on the left going. Uh, that's usually the strong side of the weak side. And we'll go the first few minutes, start right. The next few minutes, start left. Uh, we're working two on two stacks, any kind of the, the two by two game that they're doing. Uh, then we'll switch over to inside run. Here's our inside run period. Again, uh, you know, the, the, obviously the white guys are all offense, the blue guys are defense. Again, I know not everybody has the, op, the ability to do this. Um, I'm going on my 30 year, 30 year of coaching. Again, I, I've been on those staffs where we can't even do team because we didn't have 22 guys. So obviously I'm just kind of sharing you with some things that we do. Um, so that's inside run period. Uh, then when we go into seven on seven, again, we have the ability to do this. We have, here's our defense out there on the field right now. You see here in the middle bottom right uh, down here, that's the second huddle. We usually go two huddles. Uh, what we do there is, again, we go varsity and JV together. Uh, we make sure each huddle has a dominant guy. And a lot of times we'll put him in a jersey uh, or a little beanie on his helmet to say, hey, this is their best guy. Uh, we've got to make sure we're covering him. Um, so, again, that, he'll be on, you know, we'll have one on both sides. We usually kind of do it a varsity guy and a JV group, but the kind of kids knew when that JV group was out there, like, okay, these guys can't even really run routes to show us. Um, we, we figure the two huddles is good because you're going to get a great rep against, uh, you know, a pretty good rep against the scout team. And then even, even our JV guys are, are, aren't bad. So um, here we go, two huddles there. Um, this next slide is the one everybody hates, hates me on. Um, if we're going team and we want to go tempo, uh, see that scout card where it says that's our scoreboard. And we actually load the scout card onto that. Um, I know not everybody has that ability. Um, it's something my, my buddy was a, uh, a uh, GA at San Jose State and brought this back to me. That was a pretty good deal. So. If we want to go, obviously the offense can look there and kind of see the formation up on the board, line up, and run the scout card from there. Um, the offense uses us a whole lot more than we do, but if we do need to get tons of reps and it's a team to go on tempo and we do need to practice tempo, that's the way we do it. Um, obviously, this is our drone footage here. And, uh, you know, I always think it looks like a video game. You know, it's it's pretty pretty cool deal to coach off of that. Uh, so Tuesday, um, Tuesday mentality is tough guy Tuesday. Uh, we're gonna change it up a little bit. Again, dailies early on. Our first, after our first run period, we're going to do team run RPO. Now, if the team we're facing is not an RPO team, we're going to do play action pass. Okay, but we're starting to see obviously a lot more RPO teams. Uh, then we have another pass and over. We're going to go team pass at the point. Again, I'm the biggest anti seven on seven coach you'll ever meet. Um, I think it teaches really bad habits. The problem here with team pass, though, is again, you have your varsity defensive line going against the scout offense. And we basically just tell them, hey, run by the quarterback. We know you're there. Um, you know, that, that's the problem there. And to me, it's still better than seven on seven. It's more realistic. Uh, we'll throw some draws in there. We'll throw some screens. It's some stuff that you can't really do in seven on seven. Make it more a little bit realistic. Uh, Tuesday, we're tackling. Yes, we are hitting on Tuesday. It's Tough Guy Tuesday. Uh, then we go into red, red area team. Uh, this week, we were playing Liberty. They got some double wing stuff. Uh, so we, that was our kind of walkthrough at that point. I thought it was going to be a walkthrough. Uh, during the special team, we, they, we had to make sure we covered two-point play and swinging gate. Uh, and the last five-minute period there is we're going to go goal line. So that's our typical Tuesday. 
Typical Wednesday is all third down, pressure day. Okay, this is my fun day that we love this day. Again, dailies are usually our pre-practice. Uh, and for our, instead of a run endo, because it's a big third down deal, uh, the DBs are all gonna work press and goal line man, catch man, those type of things. Uh, we're gonna go back to inside run, half line. Again, not a huge fan of inside run, but the half line is huge for us. Uh, I needed to make sure we at least have two days of half line run. Uh, so we got punts. Uh, then we go in our pass endo, you know, we're gonna work that week, we're working dog cone, uh, bingo is our bunch check. Again, that yellow highlighted means we're gonna do a pass under pressure. That's everybody's doing it. It's offensive emphasis first. So instead of standing there watching our scout team blitz against our varsity offense, we're gonna go over and work something specifically that's different. Again, the linebacker coach is only gonna have three or four guys, his varsity guys. You know, the corner coach is gonna have three or four guys, his main guys. Uh, then we're gonna go pass under pressure. Tackling, this is gonna be a specific, position specific tackling uh, on that day. Again, we're not taking anybody down. Uh, again, Monday is usually against rugby rings, against bags. Tuesday's live. Again, we don't really take guys down, but we do a little more, more physical contact. Again, we're going to tackle every day. Does not mean we're taking guys down. Uh, then we're going to work third downs. Uh, I'll show you my, it's hard here in a minute, uh, but we're going to have the chains out. And our head coach comes out, brings the chains out, and hey, there's a third and three. They look to the left, and there's the chains. Hey, third and three. So we communicate in those third downs. Uh, again, at the end of the time there, we got some scheme stuff. Uh, blitz on the cans. And then uh, this last period, it's kind of different every week. Uh, this week, this was the J Sarah's Wednesday. Uh, we worked empty and bastards. So that's just stuff we don't see. Endo sets, stuff they've kind of done uh, two or three times. They don't do it every week. But hey, man, if we don't talk about these things, uh, we're going to be in trouble. So the first five minutes, again, will be we'll kind of a walk and talk on some cans. Again, not a big fan of that, but we got to kind of do it. The next five minutes is actually running plays against that stuff. Uh, so then we're going to talk, obviously, we're going to kind of close. We're going to go over our opponent scouting report. Um, let me see if I can get this right now. You see that on there, Jim? I'm going yes. So this is what we give the kids on huddle. Okay, so we give them this on huddle on Sunday night. Uh, we do not give anything uh, paper-wise now. It's all digital. Okay, so here's our opponent scout. So again, this is what we worked on from 12 to 3 on this Sunday. Okay, this goes up Sunday night, usually about 5 or 6 o'clock. Uh, we have the dates, Cerritos College. This was a 737 start on Fox Sports West. We're playing modern day. Uh, we talk about our code. Okay, be prepared, do your job, swarm and punish, finish the play. This is not going to change. This is going to be every week. Again, it's our code. Hey, to beat modern day, we got to be prepared. And we'll talk about those things. Do your job, swarm and punish. Those are two things we already talked about that are big for us. And then finish the play. Okay. Uh, what do we have to do to meet modern day this week? Okay. Well, the first one is relentless pursuit, gang tackling, heading. So we make a couple things in there that we're thinking about there. We got a first force takeaways. Okay. When third down, that one's going to pretty much be on there every week. A uh, one play at a time mentality. You know, the first time we played them, uh, the third play of the game was a touchdown. And we kind of saw our kids head sink a little bit. We got a really bad start when we played them in the league game. Um, so again, we talked about that. Hey, this is a one play at a time mentality. And then limit their playmakers. Obviously, uh, number four is Bryce Young going to Alabama. And number four was a receiver, Cody Epps. We cannot let these two guys beat us. Okay. Uh, here's a little uh, little deal of their scouting report. Uh, we don't usually put the two deep. You know, the running back there is just two deep because they kind of use two backs. Bryce Young's their quarterback. Uh, on the left, there's their schedule. Um, obviously, we had played them before and lost in, in the league. Uh, on the right, they're 12 0, 5 0 in the league. Bruce Wallace is head coach. Uh, number one state, number one in the nation at that point. Uh, this was a picture of when we beat them in Angel Stadium a few years back. Um, the, uh, one coach does this. Paul Dees, our D-line coach, does this. So season average, we're talking about points. Uh, at this point, they were averaging uh, – the first, so the number on the left was the one we played them the first time. The number on the right was the time we played them the second time. So the first time we played them, they averaged 52 points. Now they're averaging 50 yards per game. That's only on there when it's when you play a team twice. Same thing, running game, passing game. Uh, down in distance, here's a report. Again, these are fake numbers. Okay, these are – I'm not putting out there what they're doing or anything like that. These are fake numbers. Um, but obviously, one of the things we look for is when do they stop uh, running the ball, okay? So, again, um, these are fake numbers. We play modern day. Hopefully, Dave Money won't be mad at me because, again, these are, these are not real numbers. But this is an example of showing, hey, anything third and eight or more, they're not running the ball, okay? So now we can be a little more exotic with our pressures, some dime stuff. We don't really have to be gap sound because we're not worried about them running the ball. Uh, and obviously, we take, a ball, take away any plays inside the 10-yard line. Uh, now we're talking about their offensive stats. We do this. We get this from Max Preps. Uh, we kind of just sort this. So that's their passing stats, rushing stats, receiving stats. Uh, offensive personnel. 
So we make a little picture of this. This is probably the number one thing our kids look at more than anything. Um, so here's a quarterback, Bryce Young, committed to Alabama. Uh, the first time we played him, those lines are in red. We have the 2018 season, 2019 season. His Twitter, all, all, all our kids know Bryce. You know, they, they play in seven on seven teams. They go and train with different people. So we're going to put strengths, weaknesses. Obviously, took Bryce's weaknesses out. I don't think that's fair. Uh, and then bottom line. We're going to do the same thing here with the running back. You know, any of these guys that uh, are coming back next year, I kind of took out. I left the first thing here. But we're going to make some critical factors of basically what we think about this kid. Okay. And then the first game, he had seven carries for 33 yards. Here's the stats on the year, receiving, rushing. Um, again, I do the quarterback. It's, it's, I'm looking for those things. Uh, our, our safety coach, John Hall, does the running backs. Okay, here's a couple of the running backs. Again, I took everything out of here. Uh, Mr. Yates is coming back next year. Uh, there's his offers. Uh, the tight end was a senior. Get some some ideas, obviously, some things we thought about him. Uh, receivers, again, uh, Cody Epps was a senior, so I kind of left his things on here. Uh, the other guys are all returning, so I kind of took off critical factors on them. I got to see these offers. I mean, all these guys have, have legit dudes with all offers. Um, kind of highlight here, here's their go-to playmaker. Uh, you know, we'll put some stuff up there of all these guys. The receiver coach does this. So he's doing their four guys. Uh, again, three of their four returning. Kind of scary to think about that. Uh, so we take different pictures of this. Again, these are kids are reading this. Uh, if they disagree, they definitely let us know. Hey, coach, that guy's not this or that. Um, you know, because they think they know him through passing league or so on. But these are things that we're watching film. Uh, here's our starting offensive line. Again, three of the five are seniors. Uh, some of the things we talked about doing there. Uh, protection. And then the last one is, again, we go back to it's about us. Right, so we just talked about what modern day is, who they are. Um, let's, let's talk about us, right? So we're, again, we're kind of low on time here, so I'm not gonna go through all those things, but that's what we're looking for there. And then the other one we give them is about their offense. Okay, so obviously here's the formation reports. Um, again, these are not real numbers. Uh, all the real numbers are back at school on my computer. Uh, these are just some things I put together. So X amount of snaps to 10 personnel. Let's say there's 100 snaps to 10 personnel, uh, 60 pass, 40 runs, that, that, that extra there would say 60% pass. Okay, then we're gonna go through the actual formation. So here's modern day's trio gun week formation, right? On the left there, it says 75% pass, that's in blue, because blue is pass. Uh, here's the formation, the reds there are run. So they're, again, fake numbers, just showing you an idea of what we would do. Uh, they ran one speed option to the right. Uh, they ran five times zone read uh, to, to the formation and two times stretch, those are in red. Okay, um, the receivers, again, we tag, we're out thrown. So that backside X, they was, he was targeted seven times, four times on a fade, twice on a slant, and once on a dig. Uh, the far guy, okay, no targets. Again, this is not what they really do. Uh, just throwing some things together here, what we would do. Uh, the H had four corners, uh, three five-yard outs, a bubble. So blue is pass, green is screens. Okay, in the bottom right there, how many runs, how many passes, how many screens. Uh, and if they motion, obviously Y rocket would mean the Y on the left would motion across. Uh, he did that two times. So this is gonna be done for every formation. Okay, again, I didn't fill out these other formations and we're behind on time anyways, uh, but we'll go through every formation. Okay, and then now we do it for 11 personnel. How many snaps? What are they doing doing this deal? Again, I'm in charge of all the personnel deal. Uh, this one, I just kind of made it 50-50. So that would be in black. If this is more of a run formation. Uh, we would put that in red. Uh, the top modern day is because they're a red team. Uh, you know, if the team's blue, we do use blue lettering. Uh, so the Z this time and this formation caught one fade. The H catches this. Uh, the Y has got no targets. Uh, they're going to run counter back here five times. They're going to run stretch the other way five times. Okay, so again, on the bottom right, how many runs past the screens? So we're going to do that for all formations. Here's their empty uh, run report. Okay, so this week we talked about Marty. Here's our top four run plays. Okay, so again, here's a GUI counter that they run out of this formation. I do not draw this up every week. This is done in Visio. It's done once, and I pull it up here. If I need to change a line or do something like that, great, I will do that. Um, but again, these are... You know, only a certain amount of plays we'll see the year. This is drawn up once and it's thrown in there. I think for this purpose, I only put one play in there. Um, but again, we would draw up the top four. We're only going to draw this against our four man front. We do run plenty of mint or a three down deal. Um, I don't know how much the kids really look at this or how much kids really understand this. Uh, again, I want to give them this ability. I try to make it big because half the time they're seeing this on their phones. Um, and then top pass plays. Again, these are not moderate top pass plays, but we're going to go to the top four uh, two by two concepts. Again, this is not, these, these it's done in Visio. Um, it's all, if, if you use Visio, it has stencils. This literally takes me less than four minutes. And then the three by one routes. Again, these are not all moderate routes. I'm just trying to draw some examples of stuff there. So that is the two things that we get uh, scouting report wise. Okay, moving on through here. Let's go back to 
Um, so again, so scout report, uh, personal report. Uh, we're going to go over Monday's install, uh, what that would be. Uh, we're going to talk about scout team considerations. Hey, man, we got to make sure we got a great guys that tied in. Uh, they have a really tall receiver. Um, do we need to put him in a jersey? Are we running any special coverages to him? Uh, meeting ideas. We like to go into, we have meetings every day. Uh, do we need to show, what, what cups are we going to show? You know, hey, hey, defensive line coach, make sure you show all their gap scheme stuff, man. That's, 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 that's wicked. Uh, videos. I'm, I'm a big fan of videos. Um, you know, any, anytime Saban speaking, you know, we, we show a bunch of those videos. Uh, the opening scene to Patton, you know, there's some different things that we show. Um, and then what games are we going to show the kids? We try to not show them games where they're just playing a really bad team. You know I mean? We try to show them some cut-ups or some things uh, that's going to kind of get them engaged in the game. And then issues and concerns. Everyone goes around the table. Okay, Paul Diaz, D-line coach, what, what are your concerns? What are you thinking? Um, and he'll give his concerns. And if there's none, there's none. I, pretty much everyone comes up with something. You know, hey, you know, I'm, I'm worried about him scrambling, man. We, we got to kind of talk about, um, you know, I'll let you know how the practice week's going. But there's some things that we did. We, we've brought in a coach's brother who played in the NFL uh, to be a scout quarterback so he can run around. He played Bryce Young. Um, you know, and that, that's nothing that I came up with. It's something that, you know, DB coach came up with. Hey, man, my, my brother played for the Patriots. Uh, he'd love to come in and, and, and run some scout team. Oh, shit, let's do it. So um, we talked about our concerns there. Oops, I thought I was done with that. Um, so then, uh, so that's basically the weekend. We end at that point. Uh, Monday schedule, obviously, we have to make sure the scout cards are ready. Uh, we have pre-practice, we have a great meeting. After practice, so what are we going to do after practice on Mondays? We're going to talk about their RPO, short yardage, red area, and goal line stuff. Now, I already have an idea of what I want to run here. Okay, so our practice is over at 6 o'clock. We come up in the office. Uh, they're allowed to give, share their ideas. Hey, Chris, I'm thinking this would be great for RPO situation. Hey, Chris, I have this for red zone. Um, if they don't care what we're doing, we're just going to do what we do. We, we do it. So this is their ability to talk. Sometimes it's a 10-minute conversation. Sometimes it goes on for over an hour. Um, Tuesday afterwards, um, again, we've had our Tuesday practice. So we've got to make sure before practice, your scout cards are ready. We have a great meeting, uh, great practice. And then after that, we're going to talk about ideas for third downs. Again, I know what I want to do. Um, but if they have any kind of game, hey, hey you know, D-line coach, hey, Chris, we run a chaos this week, uh, they'll be spinning. We don't talk about these things on Sunday, okay? We talk about base downs, first down, and second and one to seven. If I, you know, we used to put a ready list together on Sunday night. Here's our ready list. That thing would be butchered by the end of the week because we added, took out, you know, I didn't really have enough time to sit down and watch their third down. What are they really doing? Um, so we, we, we piecemeal now. So Sunday, when we leave, we know what we're going to do on first down and second and one to seven. And then Tuesday, we talk about, hey, what do we want to do? Short yards, red zone, goal line, RPO situations. You know, Tuesday night, hey, we're going to talk about what we want to do on third down. At this point, I've watched enough film to know what I want to do on third down. Um, and then we'll put together our, our installs at that point. Uh, Wednesday, obviously make sure scout cards are ready. We have great practice, great meetings. Uh, then obviously afterwards, we all come in. Uh, it's fairly mandatory. We're talking about, hey, what do we need to cover and walk through? You know, D-line goes, Paul, Paul, what do we need to do? Hey, man, we need to see them some, some more of those screens. Like, we kind of were screwed up on those ones. Uh, you know, corner coach, safety coach, hey, man, you got, you got to show me some more motions. Um, so we talk about that and what we need to do in that situation. Uh, Thursday, obviously, we have a first period class. We do our walkthrough. Um, after school, we have our uh, varsity uh, or JV game. We lift and meet. Um, and then, again, we play the game on Thursday. We watch film and we watch their cut-ups and do different things. And one of the things we, we play is – uh, you know, good offense, bad defense. You know, we'll watch every, every, every dynamic play they have. Uh, and then if, on Thursday evening, we'll work on a, pre, a game day test. All the coaches give a game day test. Uh, they're in charge of that. They usually give me a copy afterwards. Uh, you can definitely tell the coaches on our staff that are teachers. Uh, you know, our defensive line coach has been a longtime teacher. Uh, he's in a different role now uh, in administration. But uh, you can tell he's been a teacher. And we have some other guys that's like, okay, hey, they're young coaches, and they're not really sure what to put together on a game day test. So – the last thing I want to show you here real quick is what a typical install would look like. Um, so here's a Tuesday. Um, so this is a random week. Again, I'm showing a team that we didn't play last year. So here's Tuesday's practice. So they'll get this. Um, obviously, we played at Amtrak. What we call Amtrak was double wing. Uh, so again, this is something new that we'll show them. This, we didn't do this on Monday. Um, so again, we'll talk about this. Uh, we give them the practice plan before practice. This is up at night. So I do this before I leave. Uh, you know, we're done at practice at 6. I leave about – if I left at practice at 6.15, I get home about 8.30. And if I leave at 8, I get home at 8.30. That's how bad LA traffic is. So I stick around and do this before we, we go back, uh, before I go home. So this is usually done at night. 
Uh, it just has a practice period so they know what we're doing if there's anything special that day. Um, so here's team run RPO. So here's base calls, there's Amtrak calls, there's our mint calls. So they'll know on the night before what we're doing uh, before that practice. So anything new would be on here. So here's Rack Chucky. Um, so again, I used to put two slides on this. Um, but it, like I said, half the kids have to watch this on these on their phone. Um, so we're gonna go through, this is a new call. It's not something we ran on Monday. Um, it's not a new call to our package, it's something we've ran before. Uh, so here's Team Pass. Again, so here's our calls. Um, and here's what we're doing special that day. That's different. Uh, then we'll go in red area. So again, again guys, it's Tuesday, we're gonna work red area. This week we consider red area 20 to the eight. Uh, we'll talk about how many plays they had, 21 plays, how many runs, how many passes, if they're gonna motion. Uh, here's their top formations you're gonna see. Um, I don't really need to draw that. Kids, our kids know what spread at ace, what trio, what tray is. Um, so if, and we're in the red area, okay? And we are, here's our coverage call. We're gonna red, red seven switch, we're gonna red flex seven bracket, we're gonna run mint plug 43, which is a sim pressure, okay? We obviously want, these guys we want to blitz quite a bit, right? So this is what your blitz calls you can get. Rack Chucky, Sting Check, Mint Jab Elway, and then we're gonna be in Penny, run Maka Sparrow and Money Sting. Okay, and then uh, again, red area. Uh, so again, so here's the actual calls. Okay, obviously there's a lot more Penny there because that's something that's different for the week. Those base calls, flex seven bracket, that's a base call for the whole week. We can also run that down there. Uh, then we're gonna drop some of these plays. Obviously skim through that. Uh, goal line, okay, this week they're going goal line from the seven yard line in. That's what we consider goal line. They're gonna change their offense. Obviously they were a big double wing down there. Um, coverage calls, obviously we would check to Amtrak. Flex zero share would be a coverage call. And then we really like Sparrow zero blitz down there. Um, and then we'll show them obviously how many plays we're gonna do with that. Uh, that would be on Tuesday. Uh, obviously they were a gate team. So again, they're gonna know going in, swinging gates and uh, what, we're, what they're doing in that situation. Okay. And then the last one, I know we're a little bit behind here, a little over. Uh, Wednesday, that's always a fun one. Again, I'm showing this one, their offensive coordinator is not returning. So it is what it is. So here's what we get. This is uploaded to Huddle on Thursday, on Tuesday night. So they know going in what we're doing. Uh, here's the practice plan. Again, the same one I showed you guys earlier. Uh, here's their inside run. Again, we'll get through those plays, try to bury through them real quick. Uh, those are the calls. Again, there's no there's no slides after this because at this point there's nothing new on inside run. We're just we're gonna work the plays that we gotta make sure we work. Uh, pass under pressure. So again, we're gonna work some stuff in base, nickel, mint, get back into nickel, and then work a couple dime calls. Again, we're gonna draw those up of what those calls are, uh, unless we've already worked this on Monday or Tuesday. Usually, so this one's usually kind of long. Okay, so that's all passenger pressures. Uh, then we go into third down. Again, here again, to review their third down deal. Uh, again, this was a different week than I showed you before, but again, these guys obviously, third and eight, the run stopped. One reason I show this on here, third and four to seven, still 50-50. Okay, so at that point, I'm gonna see, okay, I need to go and look in the film and see, okay, does this break at some point, or is this all third and four to sevens? Is this mostly run on third and four and five, and mostly pass on six to seven? We can tell what's just third and eight or more, dude, they're throwing the ball. Okay, again, at that point, we can get a little more exotic. I don't think we worry about being so much uh, gap, gap sounds. Uh, we can start doing some real crazy things there. Uh, here's our third down calls again on the left. You know, we have the change, they come out. You know, the kids will look, they'll see it's third and one. They'll call out the down and distance. Hey, it's third and one, run Sparrow Zero Blitz. Next down is third and four, run a sting check. Okay, and then obviously we're yelling in from the sideline, nickel, nickel, nickel. They come in and we're running games one open and so on. Okay, and again, on that, I would draw those cards, uh, make sure they're there, and then blitz and empty towards the end here. So again, this is, uh, this actually should say empty and bastards. So again, this team ran some, some unbalanced formations, some things like, hey, they ran this, you know, three times a whole year. Let's, let's at least show our kids this. <clears throat> so we'll do that. And then obviously here we have our empty checks uh, with those things. So the kids get that every night beforehand. Uh, so that was, uh, I didn't show you the Monday one. It's just the same stuff. Uh, showed you all the other stuff. So let's go back to uh, this slide. Uh, is there any questions, Jim? Yeah, any questions out there, guys? Great stuff, Coach. Man, I, there's a lot of there's a lot uh, a lot going and on. I, I know I talk fast, but no, you know, I think you record this too, right? So they come back and kind of look. Yeah, at it. so it's it's uh, it's all really really good stuff, and 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 uh, you know you can tell you put a lot of detail, a lot of planning, a lot of coordination into that. Uh, guys, got any uh, any any questions out there from anybody? Oh, I think we lost you. I'm sorry. Yeah, you, you can still hear me. Yeah. Uh, let me uh, let me go, Coach uh, Coach Hopper, Sean. Hey. Uh, so, kind of what you were saying before, Coach Kim. Uh, it's all really detailed and like amazing, but uh, I guess 
how, like for, let's say you're recommending a coach to do, put together what you put together for like the Saturdays that you go with your coaching staff, like how long did it get to make an exact science like that? Uh, we're on, we're on year 11. I would not, I'm not, again, this is all stuff. Some of the stuff I've done for, I guess I'm going on 30 years of coaching. Obviously all the digital stuff is all new. Um, you know, I got two great guys that have been with me for quite a while. Um, you know, I lost my, my corner coach, went to go be a GA at, at San Diego State. You know, guys know coming into Bosco, coaching at Bosco, I mean, it, it's a special place. And we know that we have to give our kids the best product possible. Um, you know, I joke all the time. I don't, I don't really consider this sometimes, you know, not just sound like a jerk in the way, but I don't consider this high school football. I mean, yeah. pretty much no. everyone on our defense <laughs> is a college, a, co a college level guy. And, and our, our school is college prep. You know, it, it is a college prep. It's all boys college prep school. Um, Catholic school. Um, so we teach, we, we teach football as a class and we consider it college prep. That's what we're going to prepare you for. Um, again, I've done this for 30 years. You know, if I go to the, my local public high school next year, I wouldn't do these things. Um, what I think is important, I definitely think the self-scout part is important. You know, it, are, are you straight? You know, or how, where are we at as a team? Because I don't care, again, what you're trying to defend. If, you, if you're not straight, that's, that starts with, that's, that's part one. Um, you know, uh, some of the stuff I think we do, the kids don't even like when I show the run play. I, the kids don't need to how to read a run play. There's a couple guys that will, but you know, again, that's done on Visio. That's done once, and it's saved in my archives as counter, and I just, I just group it and throw it out there and, and do that. So again, that's some stuff that's, that's front loaded in off season. Um, I got two great guys that that work and, and are on the same page. Um, you know, and and the other thing is, you know, the the kids buy in. You know, we check the huddle minutes, and they're definitely watching this. They're looking at this. They're making comments on this. Um, you know, if I was in a situation where I'm doing all this work and, and the kids aren't really looking at it, that would be really depressing. But, you know, luckily yeah. I'm in a situation where, you know, the, the kids buy, buy in, and this is, this is important to them to win games. Great. But and then back to that, just, just take some things from this um, that kind of fit your program. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and again, if I went to a new school next year, I'm not trying to do all this. Yeah, of course. Good, good question. Good question. But you know, every, every you know, just like you said, uh, depending on where you're at, how many kids you have, the type of program you have, the amount of players you have, the amount of scout guys you have. I mean, all that, you know, all that, all that matters, right? And 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 uh, you get you got uh, you got to you know use what you have and uh, and and coach them up. So. Um, Coach, appreciate you. Uh, is there any other questions, guys? Anything? Coach, I think we got one more question. Where are we at? Uh, Coach, Coach Johnson, I think you're unmuted. I think his question was, Coach, how do you keep, uh, with having so many dudes and everything on the team, how do you keep it competitive at practice? Oh, that, that, the competitive nature is just them. Um, you know, we, we do some best on best, you know, throughout the weeks of the year. Um, you know, that's not really, I mean, it's, it's live, but we always keep it controlled. Um, you know, again, I, I, if I went somewhere next year, you can't just replicate what, we, what we've done. I mean, our head coach, Jason Negro, has done a great job um, bringing in, you know, the administration cares, the head coach cares. Uh, he brought in a coaching staff that cares, the kids care. Um, it, it's not something that I can say, oh, hey, man, we're going to go somewhere next year and just, re, re, you know, duplicate what, exactly what we did. It, it's a special place. Um, you know, we play on the highest level. These kids know, you know, we're on ESPN. We're playing some really good teams last year. Uh, I think it was out of our 14 games, eight of the teams were against top, ten, top 100 teams in the nation. So, you know, if you're not competitive, you get blown by. You know, if, if you're, um, you know, we make ourselves available to the, to the players. You know, not every kid's going to understand exactly what we do schematically. Um, but we have some coaches that really care about the kids. Um, it's, it's a great school. It's a great place. It just, you know, we, we, we caught magic in a bottle. I mean, I'll be honest with you. So, um, you know, it's kind of hard to say, oh, this is, these are the exact steps that we took, you know, to get to where we're at right now. But, um, and like I said, I've, I've done this almost for 30 years now. I, I've, I've been at three schools where we started the program from scratch. Um, one of them, we, we didn't even have, you know, practice because we didn't have 22 dudes. Uh, we we're all underclassmen. So I've been in different, different situations. You know, basically, I just wanted to share what we do. Um, and again, this is not something I would say, hey, let's, everyone can do this in, in their off season. And, and by next uh, game one, you guys should all be doing exactly this. You know, again, if I, if I left, that's not exactly what I would be, what I, what I would be doing. 
So hopefully that explains that. Yeah, great coach. I appreciate it. Coach King, I, I thank you so much um, for coming on and, and, and talking ball with us. Uh, you know, I, I know I got a lot out of it. I'm sure guys, uh, you know, it's just like any other clinic, any other presentation presenter, you know, you're, uh, you, 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 you hear a few things and some things click and you make some notes and you think about it and you tweak it a little bit and apply it to, uh, to what you're doing. And, uh, you know, then, then it's worth, what's worth our time and investment into sitting down and, and, and listen to somebody, uh, present their stuff. So, uh, you know, it's not magic for everybody. But uh, what you guys do at the highest level is has been uh, amazing, super impressive, and you could tell you you taken a lot of time and energy and and into this thing and and, and all in. So uh, congratulations on that. So thanks thanks for your time, Coach. Uh, any Jim. other last comments from anybody? Any, any other questions? Anything for Coach? We're gonna we're gonna head out. Thanks again, Coach King. St. Right, John thanks, Bosco, uh, big time. I, I, I love it. I appreciate you. All right. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Coach. Coaches, thank you very much. Um, we'll, uh, we'll keep in touch, and uh, we'll wrap this thing up tonight. Keep in touch. Stay safe. Uh, and uh, and keep, keep talking ball. Keep sharing with each other, and uh, stay safe out there, and, and uh, love those kids up. All right? Guys, appreciate you. Thank you very much. Have, have a great night. Thank you.